You're up. After 14 years of thinking about this and six years of research and observation, this is the first time I'm publicly going to speak about what I've been studying. And you're the right audience. I'm so happy to see some new friends in the audience, too. In the next 20 minutes, I'm going to show you some of the things, uh, highlights of what I've been studying, how everyone can be creative in their own way, and how personality type seems to be related to the style that we create in art and what we appreciate. And everyone can be creative using their own personality type. One of the reasons I'm here is something that happened back to when I was in third grade. The kid next to me said he couldn't draw. And I said, how do you know you can't draw? We're only in the third grade. And I thought that was way too young to give up on art. <laughs> My mom always told me everything I created was beautiful. And this insulated me from the critics. And if a teacher said you're using the wrong shade of blue, or if a neighbor said what I drew was ugly, I didn't hear it. All I heard was my mom saying it was beautiful. But I also realized not everyone had that voice of encouragement in their head, and not everyone had that, that freedom to be creative. Today, we're moving from an information economy to a creative economy. But a lot of people don't think of themselves as creative. There's a myth that there's one type of creative person, like the Einstein or the Mozart or the crazy graph guy in the graphics department down the hall, but they never think of themselves, or a lot of people don't think of themselves as creative, but everyone really can be. I had a rare opportunity in my life. My wife was given the opportunity to work in Asia, and for me, that meant I could move to a subtropical island with my family. All my expenses were paid for, but I had one condition. I wasn't allowed to work. <laughs> <laughs> If you were stuck with this problem, what would you do? Other expats improved it. They solved it by improving the tennis game, going to the beach, going to bars, boating. Me, uh, as an INTJ, I went to the library. I was fascinated by art history and personality type theory, as many of you are. And I wanted to investigate where the two intersected. I had another great resource besides the library in a little bit of time. Uh, an incredible resource is Otto Krager. 14 or 15 years ago, I went to a neighborhood party in Virginia, and I was introduced to the bartender. Well, it wasn't just the bartender, it was Otto. <laughs> and I remember the first thing he ever said to me. He said, if you're not drinking scotch, in his big booming voice, I can't do that. If you're not drinking scotch, then get out of the way, son. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got to know Otto pretty well, and he said to me that he didn't have enough time and I didn't have enough money for him to fix me. <laughs> but he introduced me to MBTI the same time I was taking an advanced painting workshop. And I was friends with the other artists in the class, and I saw a connection between what they were creating and likely what their likely personality types were. So I took this idea that Otto and his wife Janet at the time and they liked it, but we were all too busy to do much with it. But everywhere I looked, I saw more and more of a connection. And before I moved to Hong Kong at one of my going away parties, I again spoke with Otto. And this time, we both had time to work on it together. So for this project, we define art type to be how personality type influences what we create and what we appreciate. Like extroverts collaborate, and they work from life. Introverts work alone from their imagination. Claude Monet, as an intuitive, expressed a grand vision. And Norman Rockwell, as a sensing type, expressed rich details. Now, something a lot of people won't tell you about art, especially NTs, is that art is actually very simple. NT is complicated. <laughs> All art is, it's how we see the world and how we make decisions. It's perception and it's judging. It's really that simple. And art is just a pure expression of our thoughts and our feelings. And it also seems to be related to our energy flow and our outer world orientation. I'll show that a little bit more. Now, a secret that most artists won't tell you is that there's a combination. The artwork is a combination of ideas and techniques. And we all have some ideas sometime. Even people who think they don't have ideas, they do have some ideas. And we all are capable of learning technique. Everyone is even capable of learning to draw. This has been shown that if you have put the time and the effort in, you can learn to draw. So it's a combination of ideas and techniques together 
that we could all be creative with. Now, the one, we looked at many different things, and one of the things we did in this process was to look at old masters. And my method of typing wasn't to look at their personal persona or the hype, but to look at their letters, their journals, comments from personal friends. And I know typing people is really tricky business, and I've never met an artist who hasn't learned to say that they're spontaneous. But still, if you read enough of the letters, the type seems to come through. First, I want to talk about the SJs. They're the ones who seem least likely to think of themselves as creative. But they implement new ideas with, through rule-based systems with guidelines. And when they create a composition, it's usually how it's supposed to look. The sky would be blue and the grass would be green. Uh, oh, I'm going to talk about two different SJ artists. Edward Hopper is the first one. He seems to be an ISTJ. And he liked to organize, express details and facts. And he said, my aim has always been the most exact transcription possible of my intimate connections of nature. And he's known for his Nighthawk painting. And his subject matters usually included empty landscapes, deserted uh, figures, urban scenes, um, but isolation, actually. And as an introvert judging type, he said that the picture was planned very carefully in my mind. I have to touch the right spot of my head from this morning's presentation <laughs> before I start. And his aim, he was inspired simply to paint sunlight on the side of a house. That was what was important to him. And his figures were often solitary looking, like the girl at the sewing machine on the left. And critics criticized him because his figures were too stiff. And he thought the critics missed the point because it wasn't about the figures. It was about the light. He cared about the light streaming down. The figures didn't mean anything to him. Now, another SJ with a one letter difference the ISFJ was Norman Rockwell. And Rockwell illustrated small town America. And he was a natural storyteller. But instead of using his words, he used pictures. And he included lots and lots of detail in what he painted. And he was known to take hundreds and hundreds of photographs of every subject before he did a painting. And it was said that in order for him to paint an arm, he, he would use the photographs just to get an arm right. I would touch the chair or the, le the cuff of a leg of a person's pants. And as a feeling type, he said, I paint what I do the way I do because that's how I feel about it. Now, something the SJs seem to do is they like things to be distinct. And we've noticed this through their artwork. For example, you could see the difference between the baseball bat and the briefcase and the hat and the man. They use sharp focus and natural colors. Now, here's a comparison between the thinking and the feeling SJs. They both use realism. They both include detail. But you don't need a degree in art history to see the difference between how they express people gathering around a meal, feeling the thinking. Next, we look at the SPs. The SPs, they don't like to follow the rules, and they're often driven by boredom. And they defy, they shock, and they mock the establishment, according to David Kiersey. And they make practical use of existing items and juxtapose them in ways that others really imagine, according to Marcy Siegel. Now, they, the SPs seem to be inspired to create from the action of creating much more, they're much more in the moment than what will ever be framed later. And Jackson Pollock seemed to take this to a whole different level. He was called an action painter. And he would make these swirls of paint splashing around. And this was a lot of fun for him. And then the paint would fall and hit the canvas. And the artwork was a byproduct of the fun he was having up here splashing things around. And he was an introvert, a man of very few words. But he, in a sense, collaborated with a critic named Clement Greenberg, who was an NT, who seemed to be an NT. And Clement Greenberg attached theory and meaning to Jackson Rourke. And with the theory and meaning, together, this is what abstract expressionism came to be about. 
Another SP was Salvador Dali. He was a larger-than-life showman who craved action and publicity and drama. And he, um, a lot of times the SPs, they react to something that's spontaneously happening. And he was very famous for his dripping clocks. And that was actually inspired by cheese dripping off the side of a table. So as an SP, he did little advanced planning. He lived in the moment, and he didn't attach meaning to his work. In fact, he said, it's enough to do the painting, much less to try to understand it. <laughs> Other people interpret his work quite a bit. I love this picture. As an extrovert of the surrealists, and I like to call them super realists, um, he said, I was the only one who went out into society and was accepted by them. And this quote I actually love for an SP. I've never been able to foresee the hysterical and preposterous course of my conduct, and even less the final outcome of my art, for which I'm the first astonished spectator. <laughs> now, comparing two SPs, Pollock and Dolly, Pollock as an IT, the action was his work, and he was promoted by others. And Dolly as an EF, the action was himself, and he was promoted by himself. Next, looking at the NTs. The NTs is inspired by looking for universal meaning. They're not very personal, and they like to express a grand vision. They're also drawn to technology. And Impressionism was partially the result of a new technology. We don't think of it, but tubes of paint were new. And they were like Wi-Fi. They let the artists leave the studio for the first time and roam out into the fields. And the Impressionists very much took to this. Claude Monet seemed to be an ENTJ, and he wanted to control his environment. He once went to London, expecting to paint fog, and was furious when there was no fog. <laughs> and another time, he said, everything is growing and changing under my very eyes. What rotten luck. Later in life, he attained the, op the ultimate control of an ENTJ, of his subjects. In order to paint flowers, he grew his own gardens. Um, as an extrovert, he painted outside in the atmosphere with groups of people. And he looked at the whole. He painted the field, not the individual flowers. And he painted the sky, not the individual clouds. And as an intuitive, he was interested in the atmosphere itself and said, I want to grasp the intangible. And said, I've never done what I saw without worrying too much about the process. And in these two paintings of Westminster Abbey and the House of Parliament, they blend in with the river as if one shapes. You don't really see where one begins and one ends. And this seems to be more of a blending that the intuitives do. Another NT was Turner. Turner was known as Britain's greatest painter. He was a shy academic who taught at the Royal Academy. And if you don't recognize his name, you recognize his paintings if you went to a museum and saw the big glowing seascapes. He, as an introvert, painted from his imagination and from sketches. And if any of you ever, as an introvert, try to paint from a model and have them looking at you, the attention could be a little bit unnerving. And he said, my eyes are for the landscape and for the sea, because landscapes don't stare back. His compositions had a lot of elements that merged together. His sky became the sea. And that clump in the beginning, that's how he shows people, that brown spot um, that blends with the beach as one big shape. Here's a comparison between Turner and Monet, uh, both NTs expressing technology. Trains were relatively new then. And you could see that Turner, as an IP, was a little bit more spontaneous than Monet. But they were both complicated. Uh, next, looking at the NFs, if you are an NF, you, uh, it's, art is self-expression. You personify, you emphasize, and you project your feelings. And art helps you to identify yourself. Edward Munch and I seemed to be an INFP. And as an introvert, he reflected and said, I don't paint what I see. I paint what I saw. And as an NF, he subjected his reality. And he said, nature is formed in the image of one's own mood, which is ultimate subjection, as far as I could think of. He said that his aim was to inspire 
uh, a spirit that will fire man's imagination, an art that will spring from our very heart, which sounds to me very poetic. As uh, Turner and um, Monet merged sky, sea, buildings, Munch as an NF merged together people. And here you can see the faces of the people merging together and their clothing merging too as one shape. Also, in his manifesto, he said, one should paint people that were alive, that breathed, that had emotion and suffered and loved. And his aim was to explain life to himself and to help other people understand life. And in this picture where he was he wanted to capture the approaching, the approaching death. He had to project himself into the scene in order to actually capture what he wanted to capture. That's actually him. Now, Vincent van Gogh seemed to be an INFP. He left behind hundreds and hundreds of letters. And if you read his letters, you find a man who is very articulate and very theoretical. They were all available in the lo online, so anyone could find them. He painted what was very personal to him, and he emphasized with the models. And he said, I shall always have an aim of painting people as I see them and as I know them. Now, self-portrait is a way for artists to understand themselves. And NF seem to be somewhat on a quest to understand themselves. Vincent van Gogh painted 37 self-portraits of himself at various stages of health and happiness, almost like a status update. <laughs> and, and Turner, an NT in comparison, only painted one self-portrait in his entire life. He did it when he was 20 to prove his competency. Once he did it, he didn't even like to look at himself. <laughs> and he said, remember, he said, landscapes don't look back. So in conclusion, I hope you could see that there are some uh, benefits of looking at art as far as it relates to personality type. Everyone can be creative in their own way. Um, it can allow us to contribute to the creative economy, and this can improve society and our standard of living. If there's one thing to think about and try to remember, please consider that there's more than one way to be creative. And what type of creative people are you most like? Are you more imaginative, like Turner? Or do you like to work from life, from, uh, like Monet? Do you like to consider details, like Rockwell or Hopper? Or do you like to merge together big ideas, like Monet or Turner? Are you more interested in subjects that are landscapes, like Hopper or Turner? Or do you, are you attracted to working with people, like Munch and Van Gogh? Do you like to plan, like Hopper and Rockwell? Or are you more spontaneous, like Pollock and Dolly? Otto Krager says, using type to look at art will teach you more than you ever learn in an art history class and give you more context than you ever learn by going to a museum. This painting is something I did. I was inspired from one of my last trips to California. And as an introvert, it was done from photographs after a long reflection. As an intuitive, um, all the shapes merged together. And to me, it just says Sonoma. As a thinking type, uh, it's a landscape. And as a judging, it was very carefully planned. And it was finished. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and I welcome your questions. And if you don't catch me now, find me later if you have questions later. But I'm very interested to hear what people think about this.